My name is Anya, and together with my harp, I am the flouting harper. So, this evening, I'm coming to you from Fireplace at Top of the Rock uh, Pop Park in Dreamalik. So, I've walked from uh, Dunmanway to Dreamalik today, and I'm on my way to Jerusalem. It's day three of my pilgrimage. Uh, and it's starting to get dark. So yesterday we walked, I walked, well, I walked and carried the harp from um, from Tot Pop to the Manwe. And it was a nice and short walk. Um, which was good because I had the full pack for the first day. It was day two. And oh my God, did I feel it? Did I feel it in the morning? I did. So I stayed with the brother and the sister-in-law of a very good friend of mine. And I would consider them my friends as well with Tommy and Gertine O'Leary in Dunmanwe. So I walked up to the, up to the, main square in Dunmanwe and they picked me up with their stunning stunning dog Patch um, who's afraid of everybody um, likes women more than men and they uh, they hosted me for the evening fed me this wonderful wonderful dish with with potatoes and and um, mince meat and cheese and it was fantastic and I had a bed uh, with an ensuite and tea and a beer. And it was like proper, proper pilgrim, pilgrim, like wonderful. And this morning she made me buckwheat pa pancakes, uh, pineapple. Apparently pineapple is really good for all kinds of stuff, including uh, legs and any types of healing. Now, my thumb is out of the plaster. I don't know if you can see it properly. Now it's not as bad. It doesn't look, but it's totally numb at the top here for the time being. So I haven't healed yet. I've been taking Arnica and uh, I have an, a, a kind of an Arnica solution that I had in my water all day. But I decided that it was time to leave it out of the plaster. And uh, now if you can see, um, it is, uh, the nail broke and I think the Arnica really worked because, uh, you know, it wasn't swollen because the nail broke, so there was no pressure building up, um, but it's still, it's still sore. So I'm going to keep taking the Arnica and for now I'm playing with just seven fingers. And I think what we should do is we should go from the fire and actually go and have a walk to where I'm staying so you can see because a lot of you guys have never seen my harp Sean the harp I made a cup of tea here oh yeah now let's finish the story first so they uh, they're both music teachers and uh, session players uh, Gertine plays uh, cello and fiddle and uh, Tommy plays mandolin and box and they have an endless amount of repertoire so Initially, we were going to play music together, but looking back now, it was actually good that uh, that did not happen because um, I, I was I was tired. Like the full pack is definitely it's a bit of a a bit of a push on the system. Today, I left again quite late uh, because I didn't have to walk very far. I don't know exactly how much it was, but it was around 13, 14 kilometers, which was fine. There was a good, good hill at the at the end of it, uh, which I will come to in a second. And I was joined. So uh, Gertine drove me back to the square. She'd made me buckwheat pancakes with walnuts and cheese. And in the morning with uh, berries and honey and more, more pineapple for all the healing and um drove me back to the square where my friend where my <laughs> where my friend was waiting um she had a baby uh three months ago and
and she came to walk with me for a little bit because I hadn't met the little fella yet. And uh, yeah, let's put it this way. Maeve had a really hard time with the pregnancy and he was born too early and it was all really hard, but now he's all settled and he's in good nick. And they came and joined me and it was just delightful to have her with me for the first, I think it was first five or six kilometers. And um, then she went back with the Baba and I went on and it was a pretty straight road, like to get to the pop park, uh, it's pretty straight road. And then I had a good bit of uh, time on my own. I had a chat with my friend Tina and I have a bed in Kill Kill in two days time. I came to my turn. I took a bit of a break, had some of my pancakes. And when you come to the turn, like it's the road is all straight out of uh, out of uh, out of Dunmanway, when you come out of, of the square and you head, uh, you head west, there is a road that is big and that goes, that turns to the right, and then you take the straight road, the road straight ahead, which is a smaller road, still quite fast though, um, and you can just keep walking on it until you come to a crossroads with houses. Like there's, there are the odd houses along the road, but you come to a crossroads and there is a good few houses, most of them new. And I think there was something like garden shed, garden tiling place, which is now closed and up for sale. And as you walk up there, you can see the mountains behind. Uh, so the stuff that I'm going to be climbing into in two days time. And they looked spectacular. They have this, they have this beautiful, like the Cork Kerry mountains, the hills, they have this kind of yellowish hue at the moment. And again, the hedgerows were spectacular. They were beautiful. Um, so they had this, they had this hue and the light was coming in and I was very lucky. It was nice and overcast all day. So I didn't, uh, I didn't get too warm. And at that turn, I turned and then it's another, it's less than three kilometers to the pub park. And you go all the way down to the river and it's a lovely, lovely walk. But then you see the West Cork where I'm coming from again. So, which is greener. It's not as yellow and gray as the Cork Kerry mountains. And then you have to, you come to a turn and at the turn, you come over the bridge and the road goes to the right. And then the pop park is the little road going upward. And as I cross the bridge, there is this, there is this, there is this tractor coming towards me from the road. And I'm standing there kind of thinking, will I go right? Do I go up? Will I check my phone? I think it's up. I thought it was straight. And he saw me with the pack and he went like up, up, up. And I walked up and I saw my very first way marker, which is really exciting because that's what I wanted. I want to walk waymarked roads in Ireland. So first way marker, they're the sheep's head way markers on the east side of the sheep's head. Now I've walked the sheep's head many, many years ago. It was one of the first walks I did, which was multi-day. Uh, you can walk it in four or five days if you, if you so choose. I walked it at the time of four days. Silly, because I, I, I wasn't really fit for walking at the time, but it brings back all those memories. The sheep's head is absolutely beautiful. And now at the pop park, this is the start of the St. Finbar's Way. Uh, now the walk up to the pop park made me think of the Citadel in Besançon. And it just made me smile. I was actually laughing out loud as I'm going up, like I was going one step at a time one 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 and i had to stop and my breathing was good uh, hips held really well i i could really feel how i was putting the legs so it felt fantastic i felt really really good and then you're there and there's more way markers and i just got so excited because of course up to now i've been walking just over tarmac and then i realized I looked around and I saw 
Oh, way more ways also means styles. There is styles everywhere. I'll deal with that tomorrow or the day after, really, because tomorrow I'm going to do an even shorter day. Because as promised to myself, I'm going to ease myself into this. The reason being that I haven't had any time to walk at all or carry a bag up to about a week ago. So I'm going to ease myself in in Ireland. I have 40 days, 40 to 50 days to do this. And uh, by the end of it, I should be able to uh, to be strong enough to do the rest of the walk. Now, here are other people. I was going to show you the pot, so I'm going to take you with me. I'm going to let these ladies who I met earlier, who are from the north, enjoy the fire. Because oh, no, no, I no, have just been... Asking, we're not going to a shop. Would you like anything brought back? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, could you get me some bread and cheese? Yeah, <laughs> I know right. if there is if there is something like that. Any type, any type. Do you have a preference? White, nice no. brown oh, brown, brown bread. bread. Brown, brown bread. bread. A cheese, like a cheddar. A good old cheddar. Cheddar, yeah, would be fantastic. Can I give you some money for that? Go on, go on, go on, go on. Bread and cheese. <laughs> oh, don't be, don't be crazy. Like no, no. I've got nice we're teas. Going, we're going to Canal. They, they nearly pay you for groceries. <laughs> Yeah, they've got some nice cheddars there, actually. Yeah. And maybe nice a cucumber stuff. or something. And just let me know how much it is and I'll, I'll, Don't worry, I'll sort it out. <laughs> I have to go show them all my pot now. Oh, yes. Are yes, you I ready for the you. pot? Like, <laughs> So look at this. Like, this is, so this is the pot park. There is animals there. Uh, and the sun is setting. And they're being all nice to me, and the sky is beautiful up there. Ah, it's so handy to have a car as well. Are you walking? No, no, no. It's about 14 minutes drive, I think. Okay. It's a few bits across. So. I am so lucky. I am so lucky because I was thinking I could do with some bread and cheese. I got some nice teas. We'll have some nice tea. <laughs> I'll see you in a little. Yeah, isn't it? That's how it goes, right? So this is uh, where I'll be staying tonight. I'm going to put on the light. Uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, let's do that. I should have done that beforehand. Did I think about it? No, I didn't. So I'll show you the pod. Um, how do I do this now? Oh yeah, I do that there. So this is, this is, we have the main building there. And... That is our sky at the moment. And when I arrived, David was uh, power washing the back of the main building, which we just saw. And uh, he straight away brought me here. This is my little pod. So over there, we have my yoga mat. Over there, we have my creams and salves for my feet and I think my toothbrush is there as well because I haven't done my feet yet and I hung the clothes that I was wearing over there they're over there airing and they gave me a sheet and a towel and he gave me a euro for the shower so you can have a shower for uh, five minutes for a euro and here are my lotions and potions and the shoes, of course. You see, I did bring the kitchen sink. Like, I have something for everything. I've got emergency essence there. I've got oils. I've got arnica. I've got all kinds of stuff there. Now, here is a little booklet that David wrote about the St. Finbar's Way. Oh, fall over. It's my tea. I made tea earlier. So, we're Finbar walked which i'm going to read this evening by david ross who is the owner of the pot park and you can get them here and there is a, my walking stick which used to be the walking stick of my dad i have my own little towel my trekking towel and a scarf it's a very bright scarf to help me that when people can't see me and they also gave me a towel there you go now inside the pods you have, there were two beds in here, but he took one out so that I could stay here. So this is my bed. And then there is my heart bag. 
I know most of you don't know, but this is what it looks like on the inside. So I have, this was a gift from um, one of my, one of my biggest helpers. He's really helped me with a lot of my gear. Um, I've got extra rope for my, because I thought that I would be just hanging up my hammock, really. Uh, these are lightweight pegs and extra rope for my hammock. And here is Sean the Harp. So he fits in the bag. There's the extra mattress, which I put up. Uh, this is Sean the Harp. So it's 26 strings. And uh, he's the one I carry around. And this is my bag. And in the bag, as you can see, is everything apart from the kitchen sink. So I have clothes in here. There's clothes in there. I think there is socks. This is the bag with the socks. Yeah. So this is another gift from uh, Marcel who gave me the pegs and the rope. I've got five pairs of socks. You cannot have enough socks. And look, I'm thinking that I may have too many. I may have too many. And this is my spare clothes. Now, the clothes outside and the clothes that I'm wearing. And then I have like something, an undergarment. And I've got um, I've got a, a silk kind of T-shirt. I've got an under T-shirt. And that's really all that I have from apart from the clothes that I'm wearing and the clothes that are hanging outside. Then we have my sleeping bag liner here my sleeping bag which is not good enough for trekking in winter and autumn but it'll do for now in spring then there are the socks here i have my uh this is the the tarpaulin and here we have my hammock which is heavy like this is over I think by the feel of it with all the stuff in it that is heavy this is nice and light this is I think less than 300 grams and then I have one more bag here which is uh there oh yeah my beefy bag is in there and then I have paperwork that I still need to do I've got foodstuffs there is more cheese and bread oh, the, more pancakes and more cheese and there is tea there as well and then I have, because tea is something you need to hydrate. Now I have rain gear. So this is like, this is can be used as a tarpaulin, but is a poncho. And I have another one for myself, or they're interchangeable. And this can go around the harp bag. This is the waterproof bag for the harp. And then in here I have... Uh, an emergency blanket there is um, uh, there is uh, solar panels which I can use during the day go back to me let me see uh, so there are solar panels in there I'll have to put that all away now I know I'm sorry <laughs> so that's that's all the gear and I have here as well my two other bags I have two more bags this is my rubbish this is my bag with um, oh that's all the stuff that's outside and here I have more medication so I have for instance um, the, the things I think which are really important you see and then you go it does it becomes like everything in the kitchen sink here yeah? um, I have, because the pandemic isn't really over yet, I've got masks, I've got disposable uh, N95 masks, because sometimes people prefer if you wear a mask, I, I haven't been wearing them. I've got toilet paper in there as well, which I, I'm really kind of embarrassed to say, but came from, uh, came from my last walk. This toilet paper is from 2018. <laughs> But I didn't use it at the last uh, thing. Now, then I have um, here, I, this I take, those two, I, this I take every day, yeah? So this is um, glucosamine with chondroitin, yeah? 
this is really important actually uh, glucosamine with chondroitin it is for your joints uh, for the fluid between your joints if you don't take it you're gonna hurt and this is magnesium these are magnesium pills now i have a limited supply i have a limited supply of that so i bought more glucosamine because this is going to run out in the next week or so and i wanted to buy a new supply so i did i also got magnesium uh, citrate which is for your muscles i take it every day so to stop from getting uh, spasms and then i have turmeric as well which is an anti-inflammatory now it gets embarrassing now it really gets embarrassing. Then I have an extra um, cord for my charger. You need to have, because I only, I, I literally, with the weight of the harp, with the socks and the clothes. Here I have another thing that came from 2018. This is like, this is for emergencies if I need to go clean somewhere. This is actually a cleaning a cleaning towel. I carried it the last time, so I thought, and now it gets embarrassing. Lipstick. Oh yeah. I go on pilgrimage and I have a lipstick. I do. I do, I do. Ma'am, this always happens to me. When I start walking, my lips really go, really hurt. They start hurting. And I've been drinking enough. I'm going to put this all back because I'll use all of it. They really hurt. So even if I drink enough, it's just painful. It's really, really painful. Um, will I, should I, what else can I show you? So we have the little book that David Ross made. Da -da -da. I love him. He's the best. And then when you're in the pods, um, when you're in the pods, there are little books that they sell around here. They're obviously pretty, uh, pretty devout here. There's a, a Jesus Storybook Bible, and you can buy them here as well. Uh, the Dreamer League Heritage Walkway. Now, this little book uh, was made through the... Um, It tells the stories, it, it's, it tells the stories and the roots and the history of uh, the different walks around here. And there's a good few walks. So there's a heritage walk, the eastern part of the Sheep's Head Way. And then there is uh, the St. Fimbers Way, of course, and the coast of West Cork. Books are your enjoyment, which I don't know, Roscoe. So it's about cycling, I think, by uh, Peter somerville large let me see the coast of west Cork. uh peter's account of an exploration by bicycle of the beautiful ragged coastline rugged coastline of west cork is a celebrated journey uh, the impressions he gathered on his trip remain as fresh and vivid as ever reflecting the impact of this most striking section of the irish coastline with its mountains scattered islands and crumbling castles so do you know there's enough there's enough to uh, to see and find in here so this is where i'm staying tonight um i'm gonna go do a tiny bit of yoga and then because i need to stretch a little bit because i can feel my my hips um like i said in the video yesterday i haven't really i haven't really carried anything uh, up to um, up to yesterday so the day before I had a fairly light pack because I left some stuff behind my big question really is do I need do I really 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 need the solar panels and I think that if I'm really honest I do so the heaviest things that I carry are the hammock and the solar panels if I can get my head around using those solar panels, and this is something that I've wanted to do for years already, and I can make that work successfully. 
what it means is that I'll be completely independent apart from water, then all I'll need apart from um, apart from from um, apart from water, I won't I won't need anything. That would give me the type of freedom that creates enormous safety, really. So I don't know. Uh, I was. It's it's something I really need to still think about. I'm gonna have a wonderful night here, I'm sure. Like I've I've been very lucky up to now. Um, people have really looked after me, and they refused to take my money. I initially asked, could I um, could I just hang my hammock somewhere? And when I arrived, David Ross was uh, he was power washing the back of the main building. And uh, I was I, I just watched him do it. And he was like sprayed with all this white paint. And then he spotted me and went, like, oh, my God, we've been waiting for you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's off now to a historical society meeting in Bantry. And the girls are getting uh, some I think what happened. They're from uh, they're from the north. And they're doing like a coastline thing. They they went to Malinhead. They're going to Mizenhead tomorrow, and they just offered to to get me uh, to get me cheese and and bread, which is really isn't it bizarre? Like, I I am a Dutchie, I think at heart because all I can think about is bread and cheese, brown bread and cheese. I can live off that. Like that's good. That's good going. Uh, now. My friend Marcel, who did, uh, who gave me all this gear, yeah, the who helped me, uh, he taught me as well how to set up uh, the hammock and how to tie the knots and stuff because he's very knowledgeable that way. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, he told me that um, something I had missed completely. But there are uh, the the Roman Catholic Church here in Drimley which is like, like less than a mile from here has a Harry Clark studio window. So tomorrow morning I asked David and he said there is a, the local priest will be hanging out there. <laughs> He's either saying mass or hanging out in the church. So I think I'm going to go, I'm going to go and, um, and see, can I, can I, uh, can I see those windows? That would be amazing. Cause Harry Clark's studio windows are stunning. You know, people people will travel for that kind of stuff. So I'm going to travel for that as well. I'm going to walk there early in the morning. And then all I have to do is go to Castle Donovan. Now, so tomorrow morning, uh, I'll be doing that. And then I think I need to leave here at midday. I need to be gone from here. And... I'll be heading for Castle Donovan, where I will be staying with my friend Trace, because I haven't seen her in ages. And I said to her last year already during the summer that I wanted to uh, to come and stay with her, and that I wanted to walk here and come and stay with her. So tomorrow I get to come and stay with her. Uh, I think she has a friend there as well, and there is a bed for me. And my friend Tina today told me that future forest will put me up in Kilkil. Kil. Now, tomorrow I have more or less a day off. It'll be a short day. I'm going to go through the bag again and see if there's anything else I can shed. Now, having put out all the clothes, I definitely am not going to leave any clothes behind because I've got one undergarment and uh, in the bag, one undergarment on me. I've got this dress, which I've had for a long, long time, ever since my friend Eva Maria left. Um, I've got this blue thing. I've got the red, uh, which also was given to me by Marcel. And I've got my blanket, which is, this is a lovely story, actually. Um, his, um, the partner of his father, she got this in Kerry. She is from, uh, from up the country. She got this in Kerry, brought it to the Netherlands, and then she wanted to get rid of it. And he, he got it for me. Like He went like, yeah, no, that's wonderful. So I've got a Kerry blankie 
I got a Kerry blankie that went all the way to the Netherlands and then came back to me. So um, I've got that and I've got the T-shirt that I'm wearing. I've got the dress, which used to belong to my friend Eva Maria. I've got these tights, which are really warm. Um, and then I've got my walking pants and I've got the little uh, little black summer dress, which is I like wearing layers. Yeah, I'm not into gear at all. Uh, most of this doesn't weigh very much uh, and I wear it anyway. And then I've got the socks. The main things are the socks because I, I want to wear stuff that I feel comfortable in. And I really prefer walking in dresses. Now, this dress is kind of coming apart. It's been very old. But I think that's why it's perfect, because I don't have to be precious about it. And the little black dress as well, same thing. I've had it. I haven't had it for very long, but it didn't cost me anything. And it'll just add another layer of protection. Now, then I've got the two, the two cloth bags, which came from my friend Marguerite. Uh, she didn't want them anymore. And I like to have like stuff that you can just reach in. So my bottle is in there. There's tea in there now. Um, as you can, now I'm sure I'm going to get things like, oh, but is that all the water you're carrying? We're in Ireland right now. Um, it's not going to be hot, 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 dry, dry, dry. So uh, I drink a lot in the morning. And I, like now I'll, I'll be drinking a liter of tea. Like Hydration is not the biggest issue I'm having. Uh, walking through Ireland in April. I'm just hoping that there's not going to be like bucketing water coming down that I have to like trudge through the bog. Um, tomorrow, so kind of a rest day, but then kill, kill, yeah, kill, kill. David was already saying to me, I could walk over the road, but I really would like to walk the path. But it means I think some of it is, has, is a little scramble. So there'll be a little scramble. And I'll be then coming down on the other side. I'll be staying in Future Forest. They offered uh, to put me up in a caravan there. And then the next day, if I, if I get over that hill and I can get to Gugambara the next day, oh man, then I'm in business. Then I'm definitely in business. Then I can do this. Then I can do this. Um, the day after, now Gugambara, I think somebody has booked me a room in a hotel there. I'm not entirely sure. If that's not the case, I'm going to try it. Finally, I'm going to try it in my hammock. And the day after, I'll be in Balangiri, which is not that far, but I'm going to go over the path. It's like seven miles from, uh, from Gugambara, but I will go over the hill. And I have a place there with an old school friend of one of my neighbors, Sheila Kelleher. She went to school with her. She will put me up. And after that, yo no sé nada. I don't know who's going to put me up or what's going to happen. I think it is Balivorni. I'm actually going to look at it tonight because I'd like to see, can I find somewhere uh, a safe place? Um, don't know. I don't know. I think it's Mill Street after that. I think I've got a place in Mill Street because James from Casey's Bar, his his parents live nearby. Uh, then the day after, I think, is it Mill Street Mallow? I think it could be Mallow the day after or that is in two days. I'm going to find out. Uh, I'm going to replat my hair now. I'm going to go back to the fire. Will I do that right now? Will I just go back to the fire? Bring my uh, bring my pancakes. <laughs> my pancakes from this morning. <laughs> Eat those. Wait for the wait for the rest of the of the cheese and stuff to come back. I'm gonna turn off this light. Hang on, and we'll walk back through the dark. I'm gonna leave the harp inside for now. Oh, did I turn off the turn off the light? Is it? Because we don't want to, I'm very aware that uh, all these people are, you know, they're all helping me. They're so kind. And there is me, like, bumbling about like an Egypt. Uh, oh, did I do that the wrong way? Yeah. So there's even a, a heater inside there. I think we're still waiting for a uh, couple. 
that are coming that are Americans. Uh, yeah. What is that? Hey, Anna. Thanks for your company. Hey, Gertine. It was so nice. I'm going to be eating the last of your pancake now. <laughs> uh, this is the last of the light. I am truly blessed. Is all I'll say. Like it was a, uh, it's been a, it's been a wonderful day. I'm starting to believe that I can truly, genuinely do this. The big challenge will be kill kill, and if I get that done, then I'll have even more confidence. And if I can get to Gugambara, I think I am like, I'll be the bomb. Like I meet, I may need um, some more rest than after that. We'll see. We'll see. Is the fire still going? Oh yes, it is. Isn't that amazing? So I'm going to sit here, enjoy the fire, do a bit, uh, last bits of my social media and uh, do a bit of stretching and then uh, I'll call it a day. Now, oh yeah, one more thing. I, uh, social media, you know, I know lots of people say that it's all a cesspit and stuff, but in my case, honestly, it has been, it's been incredible. I put up um, a message on, uh, on Facebook in the group uh, Hiking Ireland. And I haven't read all of the messages yet, but like there were people offering offering me beds and stuff. I am really, really touched. I'm actually really touched. So I what I've been doing is I have been reading all the messages, but I have to do I have to do more of it now. Um because it there's just so many of them. Um and I I'll answer the ones that I think are either really hilarious or when people um you know are trying to help. I, I really, really appreciate it. Now there's been people again putting money into the fundraiser. I am truly, it's very humbling, really. And every time somebody donates something, I go like, okay, okay, that's just, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, because, you know, it's a form of love I don't always recognize. Like, I, yeah. I'm I'm gobsmacked. Like I'm gobsmacked. I'm gobsmacked by the fact that people are actually really I know I've done this before, you know. I I know I can do this. I I know I can do this. I know I can uh, I can walk. You see me like this? Yeah. I know I can walk. I know this is not good. Like I know I can walk. I know I can uh, I can cross Ireland. I can cross England. I can cross Europe. I don't know what's going to happen after, but I think I can do the whole thing. I've never really considered whether other people think that I can, but by the support that people are showing me, I'm starting to think like, oh my God, I'm not the only one. <laughs> I'm not the only one believing this. So that's really good. Now, something did happen there yesterday with uh, my friend Colette. Uh, I noticed that a little bit of my, of my old pilgrim like came back, which was that uh, she tried to help me put the bag on my back and I got really narky with her. I actually told her to stand back and leave me alone. The bag is really heavy. Uh, like I said, I haven't weighed it, but it is heavy. It's heavy. I don't know if I want to weigh it because it's very much this thing where, you know, we, we all pilgrims often go like, you know, how long have you walked? What are your socks like? What are your shoes like? And how much do you carry? What do you eat? And then we tend to be very judgmental about how people do these things. Um, I don't want anybody to touch my back. <laughs> I just want them to leave me alone. And let me do it myself because that there is an actual reason for it. 
I've made that choice to do this crazy thing with that harp on my back. And um, so I'm responsible for making sure that it all stays safe. Now the harp, of course, is, I'm gonna poke around in that fire a little bit. Um, the harp is very, uh, very vulnerable. So if anything happens to it, I want to be the one who's responsible for it, just like anybody else would want to be responsible for their own pack. I don't want to be in a situation where somebody is trying to help me and then it all goes really wrong and I'm going to be thinking, oh, well, you know, if I had done it on my own, it would have been fine. And because they helped me, it all went wrong. I have my own little routine. Pilgrims are very much routine people. We all have our own way of how we wash our clothes, how we take care of ourselves, uh, what stuff we use for our feet and God knows what, you know, and, and because there is a limited amount of stuff that we bring. So there is uh, everything becomes important, you know, the way you brush your teeth, the things that you believe you should be eating. It's all important. It all becomes important. Now, it looks like the fire, the fire is not dying. It's not. It is just, uh, it's kind of uh, starting to glow now. Can you see that sky? Isn't that just beautiful? So yeah, we we all have our little rituals and we, we can get really narky about it. And I tried to explain this evening to uh, a very dear friend of mine that it's um, how vulnerable you become when you walk out of your house and know that, you know, a lot of a lot of people go away for two, three weeks, like you go hiking for two, three weeks, and then you know you're going to go home. I left my home nearly three days ago now, and I know that I won't be going back until I have reached, either reached Jerusalem or I cannot do anything but go home. I will not be sleeping in my bed. I will not be in my familiar surroundings. I am going to be out there in a new world every day. Every day is going to be a new world. Every day I'm going to be meeting new people. It's going to be changing all the time. And it's really hard and it makes us really vulnerable. So the things that become important are things like... Um, are things like the, the the people you trust to talk to. Who do you talk to? Who do you trust to be on your side? And who will not judge you for uh, not being able to deal with certain things? How do you do that? Some people are really good at it. Like, And I've been thinking that my girlfriends, they have been so supportive like, and so good. And of course they worry. But they wouldn't dream of telling me what to do because they know I'm I'm like this weirdo who wants to do her own little thing, you know. I I do this for myself and because I honestly don't know what else to do in this world. Because I find the world such an odd place. And there is little stability. I'm not happy at home until I have this done. So this is day three of From Here to Rome. I'm Anya. Uh, you met my harp, Sean the Harp. He was out there uh, in the pod. He's out there in the pod waiting for me. Uh, I might play him later if there's more people joining me at the fire. I don't think there will be. Uh, and tomorrow, tomorrow we'll do a tiny little day to Castle Donovan. Um, and I'll see you again. I'll do another update. Thank you very, very, very much uh, for being here with me. Uh, I couldn't do this without you. Mom, are you listening? <laughs> I couldn't do this without you because, you know, I wouldn't be here if, you, if it hadn't been for you. And... Uh, I know, I know you wonder where I am, so I'm not that far. I'm not that far away yet, but I'm getting there. Easy does it. Like, I think that going from West Cork to Jerusalem 
the trick is not to push too hard. Every pilgrimage I've walked, I've pushed. Push, push, push. Go, go, go. A to B. Go, go. And I kept, I remember saying and talking in the videos, um, going to Rome, saying like, as a pilgrim, I just want to go straight. I just want to get there. Don't give me the detours. Especially in France, I did a lot of that. But I'm in a different state of mind now. This is the last journey. This is my last journey with a harp. And it's going to be the longest one and the hardest one. And if I push too hard now and I don't get the conditioning right, if I don't go slow enough and I don't give my body enough time to heal, then I won't make it. So I have to learn this lesson. I can only do this if I do it slowly, and with love and patience and mindfully, and if I keep my head in a good place. Thank you very, very much for being here with me. I couldn't do this without you. You guys are the wind underneath my wings. And uh, tomorrow will be another day. I'll see you then. Good night. From the Pod Park in Dream League. It's really stunning here. Good night. <laughs>